Good evening to our faithful audience around the world. Thank you for joining us on Primetime News Tuesday edition. I'm Selima Shimwefeleni Masipa. Diplomatic matters lead tonight's newscast. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relation and Cooperation, Netumbo Nandindaitwa, and Sierra Leone's Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Professor David Francis, met in the capital this morning to discuss and strengthen cooperation and bilateral relations between the two countries. Emilia Kambuta filed our lead report. Uh, the cooperation between Namibia and Sierra Leone got strengthened when Namibia gained her independence. We established diplomatic relations immediately after our independence, and both our countries are having ambassadors accredited to our countries. In the case of Namibia, our ambassador in Ghana is accredited to Sierra Leone while the Sierra Leone ambassador in South Africa is also accredited to Namibia. In the process, we also respond to each other's needs when there are disasters or crises. Your Excellency, my visit is really about two things. First, to strengthen our long historic bilateral relations with the view of looking at key areas of cooperation and second to consolidate our multilateral relations that will lead to amplifying and leveraging peace security development issues on the continent of Africa. So today your excellency I look forward to the signing of the memorandum of agreement that will lead to a framework document that will produce a joint co commission for cooperation agreement that will focus on the th five key areas of agriculture, of tourism, of ports infrastructure, of trade and investment, specifically focusing on SMEs, and of course, fisheries and marine resources. Still on Namibia, Sierra Leone relations. Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Sierra Leone, Professor David Francis, revealed that Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relation and Cooperation, Netumbo Nandindaitwa, was accorded a diplomatic passport by the Sierra Leonean government. He revealed this during a meeting between the two earlier this morning. We are talking about a situation where the Foreign Minister had carried a Sierra Leonean diplomatic passport. Today, we are talking about where the current president of the Republic carried a diplomatic passport of Sierra Leone. I want to assure you on this note, Your Excellency, that we will renew your diplomatic passport. So you will visit the most beautiful country in the world, Sierra Leone. So I have directed my Director General, and he, she has already instructed and started the process of application. So she will work with your team to secure the details needed so that during the state visit of our president, Dr. Julius Madibio, your diplomatic passport will be officially handed over to you. Moving on, the 42nd Chinese Naval Escort Fleet, consisting of the guided missile destroyer Huinan, the missile Frigate Rizal, and a supply vessel arrived at the port of Richards Bay, South Africa, Sunday to participate in a joint maritime exercise held by China, Russia and South Africa. The South African Naval Force held a grand welcoming ceremony at the dock to celebrate the occasion. More than 60 people, including acting Chinese Consul General in Durban, Sun Anlin, officials of South Africa's military and representatives of overseas Chinese, welcomed the arrival of the fleet as Frigate Rijal successfully docked at the port of Richards Bay at 5 p.m. local time Sunday. The drill, which has been held in the eastern waters and airspace from Durban to Richards Bay, is a second joint maritime exercise conducted by the naval forces of the three countries since 2019. The joint exercise will be held in two phases, including port and sea, 
while at the port, the three navies will also hold consultations on joint maritime exercise subjects and carry out exchange activities such as ball games. The Chinese fleet set sail from Qingdao, East China's Shandong province, on 21st September 2022 for the 42nd escort mission on the Gulf of Aden and the waters off Somalia. They have escorted a total of 29 Chinese and foreign ships in the mission. Reporting for Nampa TV, I'm Michael Madimba. On to matters pertaining to climate change. A UN official has disclosed that Africa's push for compensation from the developed world for having suffered from the impacts of climate change is bearing fruits. The United Nations Assistant Secretary General and Director General of the African Risk Capacity Group Ibrahim Ashiaka Dayong said the COP27 which was held in Egypt last year acted on what is called a lost and damage found to be given to Africa as compensation to protect its people from impacts of climate change. Dayong told the press on the sidelines of the 36th Ordinary Session of the Africa Union Assembly that the funding will be financed by the developed world, those who actually pollute to the environment most. Noting that Africa contributes less than 4% of the global greenhouse gases emission, the Director General said the continent through the African risk capacity has been raising concerns about the impacts of climate change on Africa while demanding compensation for its people. Dion further added that the African risk capacity is advocating for Africa to receive the funding as quickly as possible while maintaining the need for having competent African institutions that will be able to access the funding very quickly and disperse it effectively. When we return with the business segment, CRAN commences with auctioning of radio frequency spectrum bands. Welcome to Primetime Business Segment. The segment kickstarts with the ICT industry. The Communications Regulatory Authority of Namibia has commenced with the auction process of radio frequency spectrum bands aimed at ensuring that communication services in all 14 regions reach 80% of the country's population. According to a media statement issued by Crane recently, the auction process started on Friday for Spectrum bands that are utilized by telecommunication services licensees to provide 4G and 3G mobile services in Namibia and to fulfill rollout obligations. 5G is a fundamental platform for the fourth industrial revolution and achieves more efficient spectrum use, higher data rate, lower latency and ubiquitous connectivity. Moreover, the expansion of broad services by licensees will improve quality of telecommunication services and inclusivity for all Namibians living in unserviced minimum parameters. Additionally, the spectrum will be utilized to foster digital transformation beyond the delivery of broadband through implementation of e-education, e-health, e-agriculture and e-government and other use cases to realize the true benefits of new technology. Only telecommunication services can apply to participate in the auction process as they were consulted on preferred assignment method and concluded that Spectrum be made available for assignment via Spectrum auction following the beauty contest model. 
The Kanono Combined School in the Zambezi region on Friday received a refurbished science laboratory from the First National Bank of Namibia through the First Rand Foundation Trust. The sponsorship valued at 145,000 Namibian dollars enabled the conversion of a classroom into a fully equipped science lab. Reagan Kuala, FNB branch manager for Katima Malilo, highlighted the importance of education as an equalizer in a media statement issued by the bank on Monday, saying focus was placed on STEM subjects, that is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. He said the country needs young people to pursue studies in science, technology, engineering and mathematics in order to lessen the impact of the socio-economic challenges that are facing Namibia and make the future brighter for every Namibian. FNB is proud to be part of the project according to Kuala and believes it will help the Kanono Combined School discover the next generation of scientists, engineers as well as mathematicians who will propel Namibia forward. The recipient school's principal, Brian Dabini, expressed gratitude to FNB and stated that the science lab will enhance learning and improve the performance of students at the school. Reporting for Nampa TV, I'm Michael Madimba. That's where we leave it with the top news for tonight. Stay tuned for the Economics Roundup, followed by the weather forecast.
Welcome to Sport Planet, a cracking night of Champions League football dominates the segment. Real Madrid gaffer Carlo Ancelotti says Karim Benzema will start the first leg of Real Madrid's Champions League tie with Liverpool whilst backing Vinicius Jr. to shine against the Reds once again. Madrid's last meeting with Liverpool was a memorable one for followers of Los Blancos as Vinicius' goal handed them victory in last season's Championship League final in Paris. Meanwhile, Manchester City's quest to finally conquer Europe resumes on Wednesday when Pep Guardiola's men travel to RB Leipzig but all is not well for the English champions on and off the field. City appear to have laid down a marker in the Premier League title race by beating leaders Arsenal 3-1 away last week only to then throw away two points by conceding late to draw 1-1 at Nottingham Forest on Saturday. They are also playing under a cloud after being charged with more than 100 breaches of financial rules by the Premier League dating back to 2009-2010 season. Stand by for your sports roundup. This is where the Primetime News Tuesday edition concludes. Many thanks for watching. Do join us tomorrow for another insightful and informative edition. From myself, Silly Machine Masipa, and the entire production crew, it's good night.